So another week, another Motorola smartphone, and this time it's the mighty Moto G60s. An epic sized blow which serves up a massive battery with some proper fast charging, plus the just as flippin' huge 6.8 inch 120Hz display, all for just 219 quid here in the UK. And I think that's enough waffle, let's whip the Moto G60s one out of its box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So what exactly will you find packed inside of this very blue box, apart from of course the Motorola Moto G60s? Well you've got that fresh new 50 watt turbo power adapter, sexy bit of Type-C USB action, and the Moto G60s does actually come pre-clad in a rubber johnny case to help keep it protected. Just going to whip that off for the unboxing, and that is everything that Motorola has packed inside of the box. So the first impressions of the Motorola Moto G60s are certainly it looks and feels like a budget smartphone, but it is also bloody massive at 6.8 inches with a 212 gram weight. You've got a plastic chassis here, pretty standard for this sort of budget price point, which stretches from the edges all the way around the back end of the Moto G60s as well. And yeah, it certainly feels very plasticky, but at the same time, reasonably durable and solidly constructed as well, can't find any weak spots. You've got a textured finish on that back end which should help with grip, it doesn't seem to slide around in my palms which is always good. This is the iced mint model but you can also pick up the Moto G60s in that typical uh, ink blue colour of Motorola's, kind of a moody navy colour. And that back end is also where you'll find the fingerprint sensor which is quite rare these days, they tend to be edge mounted or actually built into the display itself. But thankfully that camera chassis doesn't jut very far at all from the surface there so the Moto G60s doesn't wobble about the place when it's sat on a desk or a table and you're poking and prodding it. Got some good and bad news as far as the design goes. The good news is that you do have a headphone jack up top to get plugged in. The bad news is that unfortunately Motorola has shoved one of those pesky Google Assistant keys here on the right edge so inevitably that's going to get poked by accident when I'm fumbling around for the volume rocker. And as with most of Motorola's budget blows, the Moto G60s is IP52 splash resistant as well so no worries if it gets a little bit moist in the rain you accidentally spill your drink in it, just wipe it off promptly. And if we have a cheeky peek inside of that SIM tray You'll see that there's space for two SIM cards at the same time, otherwise that second SIM slot can be used to expand the storage using a micro SD memory card up to a further terabyte. Alright, it's time to get this mighty Morpho all set up. Right, so the Model G60s, like all Motorola smartphones, a nice bit of stock Android action on there, so no heavy clunky launcher uh, weighing things down. That also means no crapware, thankfully, as so you jump on into the app tray, you'll see it's all basically Google Apps and the stuff that I myself have installed. As usual, one of Motorola's only additions is the Moto Experiences app, which is actually genuinely good. It adds some bonus features that are well worth a squint. So, for instance, in the personalised section, you can change up the look and feel of Android by playing around with the likes of the fonts, uh, the icon colours and shapes. One of my favourite bits is the gestures section, which adds all kinds of excellent stuff, such as the lift to unlock, very handy. And this can be paired with the face unlock feature, so you can actually bypass that fingerprint sensor entirely. And uh, what you, every single time, face is too blurry. What are you saying, Motorola? What are you saying about my face? And of course, any regular viewers will know I absolutely adore that fast torch feature. Yeah, try that one again. There's quite a few other features on here, but one of the other best bits is definitely the game time feature, uh, which I will demonstrate in a bit. Uh, other features worth to mention, well I've already touched on the fact that you've got that dedicated Google Assistant button, which as you can see there, just a quick push, and up it pops, ready to ruin your day. And I still don't understand why you've got that physical button when you've actually got a Assistant shortcut right there on your desktop to start with. Of course you've got uh, fast access to the Google Assistant via the Google Discover feed as well. That little grumble aside, I do really like the stock Android experience, it's just a bit of a shame that Motorola isn't super prompt when it comes to updating its uh, Moto smartphones as far as the OS updates and the security updates go, especially as it is that stock experience and Nokia does so well on that front. And at least all the other features that you'd expect from a budget blow like NFC support for your uh, contactless payments, that's present and correct and you've got that expandable storage as well to boost the pretty damn generous 128 gigs that you get on here as standard. And last up, that rear mounted fingerprint sensor seems like a decent one as well, it's reasonably easy to find when you're groping around behind the smartphone, it's taken me a couple of taps occasionally but uh, get there in the end. And it's pretty uh, quick to work as well once you do actually finally find it. And of course, uh, despite my face being a bit fuzzy, apparently, let's see if the face unlock actually works as well. So raise to wake. And yeah, seems to do the job nicely, that one. Way straight in. Good stuff. 
So that 6.8 inch IPS screen is one of the biggest that I've arrested my peepers on here in 2021. The Moto G60S is certainly one for media fans out there. It's got a Full HD plus resolution to 2460 by 1080 pixels. So images are reasonably sharp despite the fact that it is a big bloody screen. Viewing angles aren't the best once you tilt the screen away, the, uh, the image does fade quite a bit. Uh, but overall, the top brightness levels seem absolutely fine for outdoors use. No problems there. Wasn't squinting too much in the sun. Colours aren't exactly super vivid and the contrast isn't particularly sharp either. But again, absolutely fine just for kicking back with some YouTube, some Netflix, some Disney+, Plus, browsing your photos or doing a good bit of gaming. And when you go full screen, uh, yeah, you've got that sort of annoying selfie camera orifice centrally positioned there, which does slightly intrude on the action, but nothing too horrific. You've got the usual blue light filters and what's not. One of the big whoops of the display here on the Moto G60S is the fact you've got that 120Hz max refresh. And as you can see there, this can automatically flip between 60 and 120Hz, depending on what you're up to. Uh, so yes, really good news for any gamers, for instance, who enjoy a bit of Vain Glory or any other Android titles that support that 120 frames per second. As for your audio, well, it is just a mono speaker setup uh, positioned down here on the bottom edge of the Moto G60S, but let's bump up the volume, see if it's decent. So is the classic model worth a price hike? Is the battery life less sucky? And basically, should you stick one on your arm? Uh, not super impressive, gotta say. It's a little bit echoey and uh, rather tinny. Uh, on that top volume and it's not particularly powerful either but it doesn't matter because you've got a headphone jack so you can get jacked in at any point got bluetooth 5.0 support as well which tends to be reliable on motorola smartphones so at least you've got plenty of alternative options when i say plenty you've got two two alternative options which is better than one or none. Now the Motorola G60S is powered by the MediaTek Helio G95. Getting on a little bit now, as found in the Redmi Note 10S, the Realme 8, quite a few other budget phones. And that's backed by the four or six gigs of RAM, although here in the UK only seems to have that four gigabyte model and not the smoothest around. Some of the animations a little bit juddery, as you can see. And as you see, not exactly outstanding Geekbench scores, either if you are a benchmarking fan, but nothing too troublesome. It uh, should be absolutely fine for your everyday stuff. Messaging, media streaming, all of that lovely goodness. And uh, I am going to test it out now with a bit of Call of Duty just to see how it does handle gaming. And as I mentioned before, Motorola has added on its own game time feature, which just allows you to toggle some uh, specific features related to gaming. So for instance, while you're in game, you can quickly and easily silence all notifications as well as calls. You could also take a screenshot, you can record the screen if you want to uh, show your mad skills off at some later date. And I am expecting that the game performance should be absolutely fine here on the Moto G60S, just as it was on the likes of the Realme 8, the Redmi Note 10S. And yeah, it was a pretty smooth game and experience here on the Moto G60S with Call of Duty Mobile set to the higher detail settings. That frame rate was pretty solid. A couple of tiny little uh, judges, but so small. Didn't really impact the gameplay at all. And uh, the screen responsiveness, absolutely fine as well. That little selfie orifice didn't really get in the way. Back of the phone getting ever so slightly warm uh, after about 10 minutes of gameplay, but uh, not to a troublesome degree, that's for sure. Of course, one disadvantage of the Helio G95 chipset is the fact that it doesn't have a built-in 5G modem. So no, the Moto G60S does not support 5G. If that's going to be a deal breaker for you, you're going to have to look to the likes of the Motorola Moto G50 or the Nokia G50 or a slew of other budget 5G smartphones. There's actually plenty to choose from these days. Go check out my video about the best budget 5G smartphones for more ideas. It's a proper cracker. So when it comes to the battery life, the Motorola G60S is another superstar. It's got a 5,000 milliamp capacity uh, battery stuffed inside of that enormous fricking shell. And that should keep you going all day, helped along by the fact you've got that nice stock version of Android. Certainly so far in a couple of hours, it's only drained 20%, and that's with a good bit of media streaming, good bit of gaming, all of that heavy usage. And yes, finally, Motorola's turbo power charging is actually worthy of that name, because now you've got 50 watt turbo power charging support here on the Moto G60S, which not even those Moto Edge 20 flagships can boast. So that means that basically in well under an hour, you'll be fully charged back up, despite the fact that it's a big capacity a battery, and hopefully we'll be seeing that charging tech on more Motorola smartphones going forwards. Now flip around to the arse end of the Moto G60S, and you'll find a quad lens camera setup. Don't get too excited though, because one of those is a five megapixel macro lens, another one is a basic depth sensor. The pair you'll mostly be playing with, no doubt, is the 64 megapixel primary sensor. You've also got an eight megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. 
And I've got to say, the Motor Roller's camera UI is one of the more user-friendly ones out there. Uh, it doesn't absolutely bombard you with features, and most of the stuff that you will need to access can be accessed with just a single hand, as you can see there, and quickly and easily drag out that menu. All of your modes are down here. It's just the likes of this that you have to do a bit of stretching. And as you can see there, the usual Motor Roller AI camera shenanigans are in place. This can help you to uh, switch to different modes to suit whatever you're actually trying to snap a photo of. A bit of portrait action to help Veronica really stand out against the background. You've also got the likes of the Smart Composition tool as well, which can automatically crop it into a shot and help straighten them up as well. And yeah, it's a 64 megapixel primary sensor, but the Moto G60S uh, shoots 16 megapixel snaps in full auto mode because of the four in one pixel bin, just to help keep things bright. Uh, but you do have a 64 meg ultra res mode if you do want to shoot in that maximum resolution. And a variety of other bonus modes as well, including good old night vision for those low light shots. Good bit of pro mode, standard feature which allows you to play around with the shutter speed, the ISO levels, etc. And if you want to shoot some home movie footage, well, it's full HD resolution by default, but you can bump that up to 4K if you want to go a bit of Ultra HD. And last up, flip around to the front, and there is a 16 megapixel selfie cam as well you can use for your basic Instagram social media snaps. Make all of your friends and fam super jealous at how absolutely amazingly happy you are with life. And so far from a few hours of play, Moto G60S camera seems to be pretty dependable despite the usual budget uh, smartphone limitations. Of course, in really strong light, you will get some saturation. In low light, you'll see some blur. And if you're trying to shoot an active subject like a pet or a hyperactive kid off their tits on Haribo. But overall, very respectable. So that, in a nutshell, my pretties, is the Motorola Moto G60S. As I say, hit the UK. It's available right now, in fact, for 219 quid. So what do you reckon? Are you tempted by the fact you've got that 120Hz IPS display and you've got that 50W fast charging as well, two features you won't find on other Motorola smartphones around this sort of price point. Uh, and apart from that, it seems like your, your everyday, solid, dependable Motorola smartphone. It's a shame about the slightly aging Helio chipset. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug, subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a fine-ass rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.